And one other experiment we can do to show that a force inward is required to keep the ball moving in a circular path is to, at some point, as the ball is rolling around there, I'll just pick up the ring and watch what happens to the ball. The ball will be moving in this path. When the ball is right here, I'll lift up the ring and you'll notice that the ball will continue on with a straight line motion in the absence of a net force. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Why does water move to the equator of a spinning wet ball? I looked this up. I can't find anything on this. This is a, something you should be able to find. Some science uh, class somewhere should have done something on this. Now, maybe I'm just not using the right search words and I haven't found it, but I've looked. I've been looking for a few weeks and I have not found it. All you get is all this propaganda about the spinning ball earth and anti-flat earth stuff. Isn't that interesting? I'm just asking for, I've even used the word tennis ball. I just want to know why water moves to the equator of a spinning ball, spinning tennis ball. I've searched for that. I still get anti-flat earth propaganda. So I'm, I've had to think about this, which I do anyway, but I've been thinking about it and I believe I've figured out why, and I can explain why the water moves to the equator of a spinning ball. And I'm not going to use centrifugal force to do it. I'm not even going to mention it. And I'm going to use their precious gravity to help bolster my explanation. All right. Okay, so simply put, and in a nutshell, water flows to the equator of a wet spinning sphere because water flows in a straight line. And a straight line on a sphere is a great circle. And all great circles on a sphere intersect its equator. Boom. Welcome to reality. Welcome to flat earth. Let me say something too about these latitude lines. Now, latitude lines, these are drawn on a sphere and they represent places on the sphere. But they have nothing to do with the structure of the sphere or the, the physics of a sphere and especially the physics of how water would move on a sphere. So the ballers who have come to my, and by the way, if you don't know, I've been putting memes up on my community tab. I address flat earth, I address politics, I address world stuff. They've come on a couple of the flat earth things I've talked about, and I'm talking about the rotation of the earth and how water flows. And so they point out these latitude lines, which I'll get into this in a minute about latitude, longitude, and great circles and all this. Latitude lines are called small circles. But just to say briefly, the only latitude line that's a straight line, also called a great circle, is the equator. That means you travel in a straight line to traverse around the sphere. Everywhere else, if the circle is smaller than a great circle, if the line on the ball is smaller than a great circle, it's a turn. And the smaller it gets, as like as you go up toward the North Pole here, the latitude lines get, the circumference gets smaller and smaller. You have to turn to the left, because let's say we're rotating right eastward, you turn to the left, the higher up you go, the more you have to turn. Now the speed of the water is moving slower, right? It's a thousand miles at the equator, it goes nine, eight, seven, six, five hundred, four hundred, three hundred, two hundred, one, you know, all the way up. 
and I'm going to get into this, I'm going to explain great circles in a second. Ballers have come on and they've tried to say, but look, these are all at a right angle to the pole. When I say water has to turn and water won't turn, it goes in a straight line. They say, no, it doesn't. It does turn. One of them, idiot even said that by evidence that we see still lakes and ponds and oceans, we like when the wind's not blowing, that's evidence that the water circles just fine and stays put. <laughs> they co-opting and hijacking our reality again. But no, no water is going to move in this line. It is not going to stay on a small circle because a small circle has to take a turn. All water will move in a straight line and that takes it on a great circle. And that's what I'm about to show you here in a second. I'll get into that. So again, the uh, Latitude lines, except for the equator, that's a great circle where you travel straight. All of these you have to turn. Here's a little something I did here. You can see like from the side angle, and this is a non-perspective view. You see the speeds that the water's moving. They're showing that, you know, this is straight. The water would stay on the latitude lines. No problem. If if that actually did that, then yeah, you would have scenes like this, calm water like we see, like we actually see. But that's not the reality. Water is said to be moving at these speeds, but as you can see on this Earth I have here on the left, like I said, the equator is the only great circle. That's the only line that you would travel in a straight line. All of these, you have to start turning to the left, the upper latitudes. you got to turn left, all right? 20, 30, 60, 80 degrees north latitude, you got to turn left. And it's apparent, you can see, if, to walk this line, clearly you're walking a circle. But when you see it on the sphere with a non-perspective view, this side view here, this gray ball I have, they're trying to convince you that you can walk this line and it's a straight line. It's not a straight line. It is, it's kind of like this hula hoop that I have here, right? Remember this uh, picture? If you're walking on the part of the hula hoop that's at a right angle to my spine, let's say, or the middle of my head and you come out here, if you walk on the very outer part of the hula hoop, that's a cylinder. You're walking on this, the surface of a cylinder. But you're not walking on that outside part, unless of course you're walking around the equator of a sphere. Like you look at this cylinder. Yes, the ground is parallel to the pole. And if gravity were located at the pole, then you could say, yeah, water would go up and over and around and follow these latitude lines. We're calling these latitude lines. But a sphere is different. The ground or the surface of the sphere is not oriented to the pole or perpendicular, or in this case, parallel to the pole, but you're talking about a point at the center of a sphere and an area on the ground of a sphere. The area of the sphere is oriented to the center of the sphere, not the pole. That makes all the difference. That's the absolute crux of it right there. That's what they've tried to do. They try to explain how a cylinder works and are telling you that's how a sphere works. Well, the difference is that the ground is oriented to the center on a sphere and on a cylinder, the ground or the outside that you would traverse is oriented or parallel to the pole, right? Two different animals. But yet, when they show this picture of the sphere and they show the latitude lines as though they're straight lines. Well, they're not, they're straight lines and like a hula hoop is a straight line if you look at it at the right angle, right? If you look out in front of you and you put it level with your eyes and you level it, it looks like a straight line. But it's not a straight line. You don't traverse the outside of the hula hoop, you traverse a little bit up, you know, kind of like this. Okay, and one more thing, let me uh, introduce you to my ball here that I made. So this is a sphere. See this black and yellow belt, I call it think of it as a belt. This is a great circle. These red ones, these are great circles. The orange one, that's the equator. That's a great circle. They all bisect the ball, meaning they cut the ball in half, right? And they all intersect with the equator. Actually, they all intersect with each other. Every great circle intersects with all the other great circles. So that's an interesting thing. And that's a straight line. And as you can see, this blue line, latitude, up there that looks pretty far up, about 75, 80 degrees north latitude. That is a turn. This is oriented, remember the ground on, on the sphere is oriented to the center of the sphere and so is this great circle. Great circles share the center with the sphere. So 
this would have its gravity. Gravity would be right in the middle of this great circle. And as you can see, when you put this into motion, this is a straight line, and the straight line takes you right down to the equator. Okay, let's talk about great circles. Okay, so the water on a spinning ball has to move to the equator. And why does it do that? Because water wants to go in a straight line. Okay, so I have all these circles on the ball here. Let's discuss the great circles and small circles. A great circle are the longitude lines. And also, as far as the latitude lines, the equator is a great circle. And what makes a great circle a great circle? It's the largest circle you can draw or make out of a sphere. It would be the equator every time of a sphere. No matter what orientation you're looking at the ball, you would bisect the ball or split the ball when you draw a great circle. Right? It's essentially the exact center of the ball. So all of the longitude lines are great circles, and all great circles intersect each other. On the latitude lines, also called parallels, and also called small circles, well, as far as the, the latitude lines, they never intersect. They're parallel to one another, and they require you to make a turn to traverse them. The only lines that you don't have to turn to traverse is the great circle. A great circle would be akin to a Ferris wheel. A Ferris wheel, you go up and over. That's the only curve. It's up and over, but as far as your orientation to left and right or turning, you don't turn, you just go straight. So if you were to walk a great circle, you would walk dead straight in a straight line and you don't turn at all either to the left or the right. Also, if you take two points on a sphere and you draw a straight line from one point to the next, keep going on that straight line and you will go all the way around the circle and you will meet right back exactly where you started and you will have just drawn a great circle. Anything other than a great circle is a smaller circle, and a smaller circle drawn on a sphere is a turn. The, the smaller the circle gets, the more you turn. Now, on a rotating Earth that's rotating eastward, right, and I'm talking northern hemisphere, it's the exact same on the southern hemisphere, it's just opposite. But in the northern hemisphere, you would turn to the left. Okay, before I go on about water flow, let me just finish with the description or the explanation, if you will, of a great circle and small circles. Like I said, the great circle is the largest circle you can draw on a sphere. A great circle and the sphere share the same center. The great circle is kind of like an orbit with the center of gravity. But, you know, if we're talking the ball Earth, you know, the gravity in the center of the ball, well, the great circle shares that center. So everything going on a great circle is essentially going in an orbit around the center. Okay, that makes sense. And great circles are all the same size. They share the same radius, the same diameter, and the same circumference. They're, they're all exactly the same on a sphere. Okay, so being that you have to turn on all circles that are smaller, all the small circles, that's anything smaller than a great circle, you have to turn. So if you try to go straight while traversing a small circle, you'll end up at the equator, right? Because all great circles intersect the equator on a ball or on a sphere. You have the equator, which is obviously intersecting the equator, but every other line, all the longitude lines intersect the equator, and all great circles drawn on a ball intersect the equator. So water, which cannot turn, water will not turn, and I'm not talking about water sitting, like you could have a merry-go-round and put a drop of water on the merry-go-round, and that water will go around the merry-go-round without spinning off, right? Especially if it's not going real fast. But that's because you have surface tension in the molecules that are going to hold that together, and you also have the friction of it sitting on the platform of the merry-go-round. But get six feet of water on the merry-go-round, and you can't hold it unless you have walls. 
and the water's just going to go whoosh all over the place. It's going to head straight out off the merry-go-round. Now, if you have a stream of water, like this fire hose, this water is going to continue straight. This is Newton's law. I think it's Newton. An object in motion will tend to stay in motion, right? Unless it's acted upon by blah, blah, blah. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But water is going to stay in motion, especially how lubricated water is. When you have water on top of water, so you no longer have the friction of the ground. And with the oceans, we're talking many miles deep. Surface tension is not going to do anything to the water because that only <laughs> works on, on minuscule drops of water, right? It doesn't have any impact on water stacked on water depths of water. It has no impact. So the water is going to go straight. Let's relate this to the spinning ball Earth. You have water moving at 1,000 miles per hour on the equator. Slowly as you move north and south, it slows down. You get 900, 800 miles per hour, 7, 6, 500 miles per hour, 400, 300, all the way up to the North Pole, which you're essentially not even moving, right? So let's take something like halfway, midway between, and the water's moving 500 miles per hour. Well, water moving 500 miles per hour is going to go in a straight line. Remember, water stacked on water is super lubricated, and gravity is located at the center of the great circle. So that's going to aid in its staying in a straight line. Orbits are straight lines, are great circles, in, in the sense that they work like a great circle in that they're a straight line. See, the latitude lines, these smaller circles, you might look at them and say, uh, and here's the argument these idiots made, these ball earth shills that come to our channel, they say, well, the latitude lines are perpendicular or at a wide angle to the axis of rotation. Therefore, the water will stay on that axis and move around the latitude. Well, what they, these sneaky or dumb, I, they're, I think they're both. The surface of a cylinder, yes, that would work because the surface of a cylinder, like I'm showing here, has the surface parallel to the pole. And if you locate gravity at the center of that cylinder, or at the pole, which would be at the center of each latitude line, if you will, these lines on the cylinder, then the water would go up and over like Ferris wheels. But that's not the reality. The reality is the ground where the water would flow is not parallel to the pole, but is oriented because, and I'm using the word oriented, to the center because if I say perpendicular or at a right angle, they start jumping. Oh, a point isn't perpendicular to a point because these are gaslighting deceivers. All right, let's we know what they are. And I'm this is exposed right here. This video is going to absolutely expose this that we do not live on a spinning ball. All right. So when you point out the surface of a sphere is not the same as the surface of a cylinder. The sphere is oriented again towards the center of the sphere. So latitude lines that don't share the same center Remember, all great circles share the same center as the sphere that they're on. The latitude lines do not. They only share the pole uh, these particular, you know, the latitude lines drawn on this fictitious spinning ball Earth. And so if we go right here, when you're on the ground level right here, now right here is perpendicular or at a right angle to the pole. Now, if you go straight, it does not. As you can see, the other the latitude lines are clearly going to the left because I have a straight line, a great circle here, which is straight. And so when you see it compared to this, you know now those are turning left, right? So the water is going to go straight down the great circle. And like I said, all great circles intersect the equator. I could stop here. It's done. There's nothing that's going to make miles high water, hundreds of feet of high water, feet of high water, circle without it crashing against the outside, like when I showed with the spinning fish tank. Sure, you can spin the water inside this fish tank, but it's climbing the walls. You see that? So the walls on a sphere Earth is essentially the equator. The, the, all the water from north and south would move to the equator and crash there, like I showed with this little animation. So this is busted. There's nothing that's going to make that water turn around the pole. Because gravity, if you want to invoke gravity, it's actually at the center of the great circle. So water wants to go in a straight line. And it's aided by the fact 
that in their model, the gravity is at the center of the sphere, and all great circles share that center. Busted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, ball earthers. I told you I was going for the jugular. This is it. I've been talking about this for a couple of years, so I like getting in the pits and discussing with these people, but uh, I'm good. Uh, they, they've started to lie. They come in and they make you respond because they drop some outlandish comment saying that, oh, P-Brain's running from this. I've asked him that he won't mention this. Well, I have to respond because they're saying stuff about me that's not true. And I'm tired of that. For right now, as you can see, I did not enable comments. We'll see how long I do that. But this is busted right here. I didn't invoke centrifugal force. I don't have to. Remember, the water on this ball is all moving at hundreds of miles per hour. That's going in a straight line. There's nothing to make it curve. If you take a, a rock on the end of a string and you swing it around your head, it's tethered to your hand by the string. So yeah, the rock is going to do a circle, but if you have something to let go of the rock, let the, let the rock break off the string, do you think the rock is going to continue to orbit around your head in a circle? No, it's going to shoot off at a straight line. The only curve it's going to make is curving to the ground because the rock is denser than the medium or the air that it's surrounded by, and it'll come to the ground. This water on a ball earth is not going to curl or orbit around the pole. Sorry, and I will be doing more videos on this because this is just too rich. This is too rich. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And one other experiment we can do to show that a force inward is required to keep the ball moving in a circular path is to, at some point, as the ball is rolling around there, I'll just pick up the ring and watch what happens to the ball. The ball will be moving in this path. When the ball is right here, I'll lift up the ring, and you'll notice that the ball will continue on with a straight line motion in the absence of a net force. Demonstrating that a centripetal force or an inward force is required to keep an object moving in a circular path.